Family definitely drives the picture. It is definitely the, the heart. And I think when you watch any kind of Rocky or Creed franchise, there's always something that's pulling at the strings. I got a text from Stallone about uh, maybe about a year ago. He said, uh, you know, would you mind have you considering playing this character again? I got this idea. It was a short text. It's Sins of Our Fathers, it said. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. It's a sort of Shakespearean, the Sins of the Father, and so on and so forth. And I thought that would be an interesting uh, melding of two different generations. You knew this was going to be a war, right? You knew that going in there. And now on, it's who wants it more? And who's got more heart? Two sons fighting for, for their names. It is sort of Shakespearean, whether you have a connection with your father or you're trying to have a connection with your father. It's another universal thing. People relate to it. In the world of boxing, the boxers usually have their sons usually following similar paths. You know, that's all they know. They grow up in the gym. They grow up around it. It's kind of natural that I would be boxing after Apollo, you know, that Victor would kind of naturally box after Ivan. Remember why you're climbing these steps. Adonis has to realize that his father was killed by the father of the man that's challenging him. This is the fight the whole world wants to see. And this is the fight he should take, unless he's afraid that history will repeat itself. So there's really every reason to accept the challenge rather than back off. Just the fact that who he is and what he is has to really be proven in the ring. What was important when tackling this film and trying to dive into the themes were uh, staying true to their journey, so to speak. And I think one that Adonis has always been dealing with has been the father and son story. You know what I mean? Being the shadows of his father, Rocky dealt with it with his son, Robert, you know, and then following that thread on as we come up with this new character, Ivan Drago, and his son. When we find Ivan Drago, he's using his son as the vehicle for him to come back and onto the world stage. His father, he's a tough guy, so he's not really showing him the love that he needs. The things that he really wants are values like family, love, loyalty. He's fighting for a better life. He doesn't feel that he's really appreciated as a son. Something went wrong, and I can't accept it. So now I'm going to use my son to come back and take my revenge on the world. He wants to be the champion, you know, and if you're in my way, I'm going to do anything at all costs to, to become the champion. I can relate to that, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's the dad that's pushing, you know, and that's where the dilemma comes, that's where the conflict comes. Most professional fighters want their, their sons to fight. They want their sons to follow in their footsteps. And in many cases, most, most sons want to do that because being a fighter is something different. It's not normal, you know, it's, it has a certain prestige about it. I would never encourage my son to box because first of all, he has so much to overcome, especially if you're on the top level. By the way, my son has to do the impossible. This is my father. He knows what he can get out of me. I know what I can get out of him. So there's almost a perfect mixture of balance. There's this unspoken agreement that we have, this bond where we understand what it takes to persevere in the ring. When he was about six years old, he drew a little card charm for me for Father's Day. And it pretty much defined our relationship from that moment on. And it was me holding his hand. So from that point on, I said, until he's at least 18, that's our relationship. He's going to be like an appendage. Every time I reach out, his hand's going to be there. Every time he reaches out, my hand will be there for him. I think my dad has always held me accountable for the man I was going to be. And I think Adonis didn't have any of that. It's a father and son relationship, and dad isn't there. He's coming back to the father he never knew. Rocky doesn't want to be, but he becomes that surrogate father. Turn off your brain, let your heart do the talking. And at the same time, every breath in his body is for the success of uh, this young man, who is the son of his former best friend. Count with right and cracking with left. You got that? Stand it right, cracking with the left. You never expect that. You have to have a passion, a love for the sport of boxing. You just don't box because you, <laughs> you want to join the fellas. You must love, you must have that, that feeling of, yes, I want to do this, and be willing to, to go to the limit to be the best out there. Looks like hell to me. Since you're going back to hell, you might as well get used to it. 
And it's very difficult to push somebody and uh, make sure that it's, it's positive, you're building, you're not tearing down, that you uh, make them understand that you have empathy for what they are going through. And there are a lot of times I would much rather be in the ring taking the punishment. This is something that people don't understand about boxing when it has to do with a, a father and a son in the corner. We're both agreeing to unite. We're coming together. We are putting ourselves in this situation where we know that we can prevail, that we're going to persevere over what's in front of us. Really, boxing is as large a life image as what's projected on the screen in, in Crete. I mean, uh, they actually projected onto the screen some of the emotion and the height of the emotions that we go through when we're uh, going through the, our dance. Very, very late in the story do I start realizing that maybe something else is important to me, my son. It only fires at the end when I decide to save his life instead of trying to win. And Adonis Creed is still the heavyweight champion of the world. I think the beauty of that story is that there is redemption and you can't forgive and you can realize that love is, is bigger than everything else in the world. Hey, Robert. I was just around in the neighborhood, so... Do you want to come inside? <sighs> Give me that. <laughs> 